Hey guys, so I was recently reading an article on Dave Campbell's TexasFootball.com where I believe Mike Craven wrote down sort of a pound-for-pound pound list of college football teams in Texas. UTSA came in number four on that list. And something that was really important was that um, Texas State came in number three on that list. And this is not going to necessarily be a video about UTSA versus Texas State and, oh, that list is wrong, so on and so forth. But when I read that, it had me thinking about Okay, we play them in week two. That is going to be a big game, and I think that can propel. If we if we do win that game, I think that momentum could propel us to do great things, and whoever is playing that quarterback at that particular point in time, winning a game like that that's going to be in a packed house is really going to get – it's really an opportunity to get the UTSA fan base really, really excited about the season and really, really um, excited about what, what's possible – for UTSA in 2024. And I think that part of it is really, really important. So just to be clear, the, the post or the article is, was a pound for pound ranking based on how each team stacks up within their conference. So it's not necessarily a direct ranking on like, Hey, is Texas tech or is Texas tech or Texas or UTSA or Texas state? Like, which team would win if the if these particular teams play? No, it is the the ranking was positioned as based on how these guys stack up against their opponents in the in in their conference. You know, it's almost like who's most likely to win win the conference in their in their situations, right? So anyway, it's it's a tough needle to thread, but I I sort of understand what he's trying to get at there. But I have some thoughts because there's a couple things that I think is really important and, and why I wanted to make this video is because I think week two, um, you know, we're going to, we're going to get tested and a lot of what is going to be relied upon in terms of us getting a win or losses, you know, Texas state did a good job of improving their team within the transfer portal and bring guys in. They have a lot of momentum about around the coach that they have JG Kenny or GJ or however you pronounce the name, Kenny, um, they have a lot of uh, just momentum around him. He's a really good coach. He's came in and and you know turned their program around in a season. So um, you know there that's that's pretty attractive for guys and guys have come in to to join the team and they've got some people to stay as well, uh, which is good on their side. Some of their good players to stay. And then you look at UTSA in that situation in our situation, and you say, well, UTSA lost arguably their four best players last year, uh, Frank Harris quarterback position, which is going to be super impactful. You lose a Rashad, a Rashad Wisdom, who has been an excellent player for years at UTSA. He's at, with the Tampa Bay Buccaneers at this moment. Wish him all but the best, or nothing but the best. Uh, you have you lose a Cam Alexander, who was, in my opinion, you know, alongside Trey Moore, which he's the next person, but Cam Alexander was huge at the cornerback position, lose him to Oregon, you lose Trey Moore to UT up the road here in Austin, right? So, you know, there's just a lot of, it's, there's a lot to unpack in terms of what that matchup's going to look like and, like, who's better positioned for 2024. And that's what I want to get into. Who's really better positioned for success in 2024 between both of the teams? Um, before I do jump deeper into that, though, if you guys hadn't seen, uh, this show is now rebranded to uh, Darian Talks UTSA. Um, and we I have officially sunsetted Roadrunners Unfiltered after seven great years of, of doing the show under that banner. Um, I just think I wanted to uh, rebrand the show based on what the direction of the show is and, and, you know, based on what the current content is. And that's sort of me solo doing my thing, having people on and being driven by you guys in the community and what you guys want in terms of content and things like that. There's going to be a lot more to come, but I'm going to get some, you can already see some stuff is coming in back here. Um, um, I'm going to take the studio out a little bit. I'm going to really, really invest a lot into this. So really excited about the upcoming season, but I did want to make you guys aware of that rebrand. Um, and if you guys want to um, contribute to that at all, just join as a member. That would be extremely helpful um, um, to, to, to really shaping this and helping this go forward. But without that out of the way, had to give myself a p quick plug on that. Cause that's pretty big news 
uh, for for um, um, the program and the viewing, you're going to start getting more content as well. So also, yes, if you haven't seen us on Twitter yet, be sure to follow me on Twitter at Darian underscore UTSA. Simple, quick. But anyway, back to the topic at hand here. Um, so whenever I think about who's better positioned in 2024, and I'm just being totally objective. This, this, this has nothing to do with who I think is going to win the game um, um, on week two. Honestly, we don't know, right? Like, we could come out and put up a stinker against Kennesaw State, and my whole confidence will shift. But but obviously, I have my biases for UTSA, uh, and I'm, I can tell you right now I'm going to 1,000% pick uh, UTSA to, to – um, Win the game against Texas State. Right now, my flag football team here locally, there's a uh, UTS or a Texas State DB named Anthony Taylor, who is um, actually uh, all, uh, we're teammates now. So I'm going to give him crap whenever the game uh, uh, rolls around, assuming that we're on the same team still at that time. But um, yeah, I've, I've already been subject to some Bob Bobcat trash talk, which is completely fine. But I'm going to steer away from that so much here. And I really want to frame exactly what's going on and like what we're going to be looking at Texas state. Now they, they do have good players coming in. They do um, have a cultural momentum and things like that. Those things are all true, but here's what I'll say. There's a lot of talk about the quarterback they have that came in. He was a Sunbelt conference player of the year and he's expected to do big things. Uh, he's a big signing for them. Of course. Um, and they're returning back star receivers and star running backs. So, you know, offensively, they expect to be um, a, a proficient offense. But here's what I'll say to that. No matter who you are, no matter how good you are, there's going to be an adjustment period uh, for you to adjust and get comfortable playing on Saturday nights or, or Saturdays in general with those new teammates that you have. It's not going to be – I mean, it could be, it, but it'll be very difficult for somebody to come right in straight away – and knock the socks off of the competition and, you know, with relatively um, no mistakes and no, you know, real bad growing pains. And I think regardless of who they bring in, you know, they're going to have to get used to each other and they're going to have to build chemistry. And I expect them to probably get rolling throughout the season, but there's no doubt in my mind that they're going to have an adjustment period, just like we are here at UTSA. So um, in terms of which team is better positioned, I think on paper, right now, Texas State is 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 positioned for a strong uh, 2024, and I think you know them based on the way he did that list. I'm not mad at the list of them being a notch above us because you know they didn't lose what we lost, right? They didn't lose a a you know all world quarterback like a Frank Harris. They brought a guy in that is supposed to do some of those things, right? So I understand it from that perspective. But here's what I'll say about UTSA. And I know I have been very, very cautious on what the expectations should be in 2024 and how we can't expect some of these guys to to just come right in and, you know, us to go win a conference championship and things like that. Coach Trailer has his work cut out for him coming into this season because anytime you have instability at quarterback – that's always going to ha heavily impact your season. And it could heavily impact your season in a positive way as well. I'm not saying negative. I'm not saying it's going to impact it in a negative way. It could be in a way to where, you know what, our quarterbacks come in and they play very well, and we end up running the tables and winning conference and, and doing a lot of big things, right? But it, it could go the opposite way, right? Because, you know, you, you know, like we've been knowing for years, when Frank Harris is coming into play, we know and we have an expectation of what type of performer he's going to be. So, you know, night in and night out, right? But now where we have that little bit of uncertainty, you know, that situation can be really delicate because if it works out well and we pick the right guy and the right guy is, is coming in and he's going down here or, and he's going in the right direction, then things are great, things are wonderful, and, you know, we're going to be on the up and up. But if adversity starts to knock at the door, how do we pivot? You know, how do we still make this a good situation? Are we going to be able to utilize the talent that we have around these young, these quarterbacks to be able to still uh, put us in a position for where we can be successful? What I will say about Coach Trailer is that I think 
and when I, I'm just talking about better positioned, I think whenever you compare where he is right now and where the coach down at Texas State is, I am not trying to necessarily compare them apples to apples. But what I'll say is Coach Trailer has built something and it's established now. Triangle of Toughness is established in San Antonio at UTSA. That is something that's established. It's not a one-hit wonder type deal and you're trying to do it a second time. No, he has multiple years now of high-level success. And to me, that lets that lets me know that he's comfortable where he's at and he has implemented a system that is going to consistent, to, in my opinion anyway, that is going to consistently yield positive and good results. You got to think about it, guys. A lot of the times, whenever you talk about coaches and players and teams, the systems is what makes things make a break. When you look at a Coach Popovich and what he's done in, in San Antonio, why can Coach Popovich in San Antonio, he's not granted he's not doing it right now, they have a terrible team and all that, but just think about the team they had in their heyday, right? You know, yeah, it was led by an all-time great and Tim Duncan and, and stuff like that, and you had – you know, you had the Twin Towers and that sort of thing. Don't get me wrong. Got going to have great players. But at the end of the day, one of the things that's made Pop, Coach Pop, one of the greatest coaches, if not the greatest coach of all time, is the system that he implements, the ball movement that he implements, to getting everybody involved, to, to, to get everybody involved and in, in getting them to fulfill their roles um, to the best of their abilities. I think you're seeing – you're seeing that with Coach Trailer. That's something that he has established um, because we see guys pop up out the blue, you know, all throughout this run, right, that have been able to come in at UTSA and make plays. And he's made some of these guys just transform their careers and things like that. So that's the one thing I'd say Coach Trailer has a nod on that coach down at Texas State is he hadn't done it for a sustained amount of time. He has to now, re, you know, prove to himself and the supporters down there that, hey, this is something that's going to be, um, you know, I'm building something here that's not just a one-hit wonder type deal. I'm actually looking to do something uh, for, for, for a while here. So I look at a coach trailer. He's going to be entering his fifth year um, at coach at UTSA. And I think this is going to be a, this is going to be just as challenging as a year as it was, I believe, in his first season here. Um, but if but, but one of the things I rest my hat on, we didn't have a great season last year. We didn't play excellent football last year, and we still had a really, really good season. So um, I, I find a bit of solace in what um, Coach Trailer has built, and I think he's going to be able to get the best out of those players. So – when we talk about who's better positioned, <clears throat> it's all, and I'm not going to make a necessarily make a pick here, but I'll leave, I'll leave it to you guys to make a pick here in the comments. And I'm sure there's going to be some Texas state folks that may see this. I'm trying to be objective as possible because I do think Texas state, like I said, when you look at the way he did that pound for pound rankings, and I'm talking about Mike Craven's post, when you look at that, what you have to, what you have to, think about is just their situation relative to the folks in their conference. And I do think that they are in a position to make a run, especially when you consider the home games they got and you consider some of the talent they brought in and was able to retain. They are in a position and that coach and that coach uh, coaching in college football makes a big difference. And whenever you have something that works and you have momentum around the program, people are starting to pour money into you know, his vision and his ideas, that's going to be something that's going to be fruitful for them. And I think uh, we're going to have our hands full in week two in terms of UTSA. Uh, but, you know, we'll have to see what, who, who wins the job out of camp, how we look against Kennesaw State, you know, or are we going to be injured coming out of camp? That's another thing that's a big deal too. Uh, but I think with some of the, you know, some of the firepower we have coming back on offense as well, I think our running backs is great. I think, when you look at the receiving core that we've been able to put together, we've seen some flashes of it in in the uh, spring game with JJ Sparkman and having a really good, really good uh, situation. We get, we're we're adding beef to that offensive line. I think we made some key acquisitions there. I think the best, 
you know, we got a lot of – we went big game hunting, I believe, in the transfer portal, and I think we did a good job with some of that. Um, the cornerback position in that secondary is going to be really, really important. And in a conference where people like to air the ball out, that to me is where – we're going to have to hit big. And, but we do got Denver Harris, who was a former five-star uh, recruit at cornerback. He's been at LSU. He's been in, in that Texas A&M system as well. So we'll see um, if he can come in and, 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 and really have some impacts. But I think both teams, if I did have to make a pick, I think they're both sort of equally positioned going forward. I think um, UTSA has more questions, more questions around it, but – you can't deny the pedigree that Coach Trailer has instilled in this team and that he has built in UTSA. That's something I'm going to rest my laurels on, and I think that um, UTSA supporters should feel confident that we have that being built. But uh, there's going to be more to come on the live uh, chat on Wednesday. Make sure you guys are there. And um, there, what I have noticed also is about half of you guys are watching – and you're not subscribed, make sure you smash that like button and subscribe to the channel. I'll talk to y'all later this week. Peace.